Thanks for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. I'm sitting with my best bud. Tony. What's up, buddy? What's going on, brother? Nothing. I'm pretty excited about our podcast today. Um, but uh, talking about our podcast is not going to go without a little bit of ball busting because um, once again, our friend G, also known as Gerard Kieran's, um, recommended our guest today. But for whatever reason, we can't get the man on. But he wants to bring on all of it. He wants us to bring on all his friends, but he won't jump on. He would have been a great boxer, man. All the bobbing and weaving he does. I, you know what? That's a good call, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's man. a really good call. That's come on, G. Come on, G. Get on the podcast, man. You got a story to tell. You got a story to share. You yeah. Know? But, you know, we were thankful for all the people that he introduced us to. And, and today, you know, we have a Naha Award winner. And for those who don't know about the Alternative Show, she's been runner up twice in, in it in London. And we've been there uh, once. Uh, uh, and I mean, it's uh, an incredible, incredible venue and incredible show. And we just, I mean, we hold on. I want to hold you on that for just a sec, though, because I didn't get to go to that show. But kind of like tell our tell tell people that are listening in, not about the alternative show necessarily, but about like walking out on the stage at the Royal Albert Hall. Oh my God, it was incredible. You walk out, you know, it, 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 we didn't get to walk out until after the after the because we put on a presentation, kind of put on a show, right? And then you walk out, and it's it's kind of just circular, and it goes straight up, and it's like. I mean, it's it feels like you're in a movie. I mean, it it's it's stunning, and and, it, and these are the world's best hairdressers around you, you know. And I, I'm just lucky to be brought along uh, right. to experience that, and because uh, we were with PR and Partners, who you know they did it several years in a row. But for her to be runner up in that uh, a couple of times too, just speaks volume of her guests. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a very cool event. Um, the alternative show is not only well, it was done at least in the U.S. The one that we did in Chicago, it was it was an alternative show, quote, yeah. you know, an alternative show to um what's now known as uh, the ABS or the American Beauty Show. Um, it was done that same weekend, but also it was alternative in the sense that like the idea was to push the envelope. Yeah, you know, the idea was to make the hair big and make it like fantastic. Yeah, it, it it was incredible. I mean, what we did uh, was so much fun, and it's just totally out of the box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice job, gotcha. nice, nice, nice job there. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, the yeah, the alternative show is, is amazing. I was able to do the one in Chicago, which was absolutely incredible. Um, actually, maybe, uh, maybe with uh, our guest today, we can talk a little bit about the alternative show because I don't know if it gets enough, if it gets enough credit anymore. It doesn't get enough love. You don't hear. Is it even still it. around? Do we know? It's 40 years. They celebrated 40 years last year. Okay, so that amazing voice that you hear, that's Francesca Rivetti, and she's going to be our guest today. But um, let's, I mean, let's, 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 should we get in? Let's just yeah, get in and then we'll chat about it. Francesca, welcome to your day off. Thanks for, thanks for making time for us, bud. Pleasure to be here, guys. Thank you. Thank you. So let's, let's get our two questions over with real quick. Yeah, no, I just want to get in the conversation. Anyways, yeah. go ahead. Where are you from? Alabama. <laughs> Similar accent, but it's a little different. You know, I've been in this country for blah, blah, blah years now. And, um, you know, I get asked that. If I got a dollar every time I was asked that question, I would be a billionaire by now. So just to make light of it, I say that. And the funny thing is, some people respond, oh, wow, what art? <laughs> <laughs> Do you say uh, London? <laughs> you know, anyway, so I'm from a small town called Peterborough. It's about an hour and a half drive north of London. So in the I'm from the UK, but I'm 100% Italiana, which is hence the name Francesca Rivetti. The Rivetti part. Did you? Did, how, how long? How long was your family in the UK? Oh, my mum is still there. Yeah, my mum. I don't mean that. I mean that. I mean immigrated. Immigrated to the UK. How long? They immigrated. Oh God, in the 50s, 55, and they had four bambinos. My mum and dad actually met in Peterborough. They didn't know each other initially. They met in the UK. 
Because and, both of them are, and both of them are like immigrants. I mean, like like. They were Italian immigrants. They I couldn't speak English until I went to school at the age of five because they didn't speak English. So we spoke Italian at home. So, you know, with that came challenges. But when I went, we went to school. Then they insisted that we spoke English at home because that's how they learned was through us. And yeah, we grew up in England in a very small terrace house um, in Peterborough. My mom still lives in the same house. Stop. When I go home, there's all this nostalgia around that because I go back to my old bedroom and I still have an old dressing gown hanging up on the back of the bedroom door. So it's, yeah, it's um, really cool. But yeah. Francesca, uh, were there a lot of like um in 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 um were there a lot of Italian immigrants there? Like was it was it like a town of Italian immigrants? Yeah, so Peterborough, Bedford was the the number one town with the highest Italian immigrant population, and then Peterborough was the second. Now the street that my mum still lives on, every house, every neighbor across to the side were Italian. The corner shop was run by Italians, and so was the other corner shop on the other corner. So it was like our own little Italy. So they they were surrounded by Italians all the time. The downside of that, though, was that my mum's English is so bad. I mean, she's like 84, bless her, and her English to this day is not that good, considering she's been now in England for, God, 64 years, 65 years, because they, they... congregated together they worked together at all the factories or on the farm and so yes it was like little italy and every year like come um the wine season the big lorries would come over from italy with the grapes and all the italians would be bartering on the corner for Mm -hmm. like their cases of grapes and my dad made his own wine and we literally used to do the press with our feet when we were kids what in wow. our small little garden in a small terrace house in Peterborough. <laughs> any uh, any Frank Gambinos or Al Capones? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, not that I was aware of. I'm sure they I'm sure they uh, existed, but I wasn't aware of them. That's pretty cool, man. You know, like you you certainly you, we certainly like think of like the Italian immigration story, like in the U.S. You know, like be it New York or wherever, you know, but, but, I, you know, obviously we're not the only country that people immigrated to. Uh, it's funny because when I, when I used to do a lot of hair shows on the road and I was on stage and I, I would introduce, you know, I'd be introduced or introduce myself, people, I could see their baffling question and look on their face, but wait a minute, she's got a British accent, but she's got an Italian name. And they, they couldn't fathom that. And they didn't realize that the Italians also went to England and not just the US and also Australia. So we, uh, you know, we had a very strong Italian um, congregation in the UK. I'm surprised there's anyone left in Italy. Do you, st- do you still speak Italian? Uh, certo, certissimo, parlo abbastanza bene. I think that was a yes. Yeah. <laughs> so how so how did you end up, or when did you come to Philly? I came to Philly, oh, when did I come to Philly? I think 97. I came to the States in 91 with Graham Webb International. I was part of their uh, creative team for the product division. And I came over in 91. I was part of the team. I traveled all over, lived in many different places. And it wasn't intentional to come to Philly. It was just by accident and my plan was to leave Philly but every time I left it and came back I started to like it even more when I mean leave it it was like every time I traveled and was on the road and came back I was like oh this is not so bad one of the things I love about Philly it's so diverse such a diverse uh, culture amazing food great art scene it reminds me a lot of England because of the red brick the narrow streets the, the parks really when my brother comes to visit me who he lives in Northern Cal when he comes to visit me, he feels like he's in London. Oh, wow. Reminds him a lot of London because of the the, the history here. And, uh, you know, and also I'm only 20 minutes from the airport, so it's a great escape. It's easy to escape when I need to or want to. And the Philly, Philly airport, the, the Philly airport is pretty, uh, you know, located pretty close to downtown. Unlike, yeah. unlike all our airports, I guess mm-hmm. if you lived in Baltimore, I guess BWI is pretty close. But the rest of well, I guess national DC, yeah, uh, you know, just for me, I guess. So, so, um, do you? Uh, how, how'd you get into the hair industry? How'd you find the hair industry? Oh, lovely! I I started putting rollers in my mum's hair when I was a little girl, and I would stand on the toilet seat cover trying to put rollers in her hair, and she would like you know shun me off because I said, "Mummy, I want to do it. I want to 
Mm -hmm. I think it was always in me. And then I never forget one day she went to go and get her hair done. Back then, we're talking the 60s. You either had it bleached, fried and platinum, or they did it really dark. There was very little in between. And I never forget she came home and her hair was so dark. And I was like, wow. I was like taken by it. And she's rinsing out. She's freaking out because dad's coming home and her hair is like almost black. And I saw this dark water rinse out of her hair. And I was so excited about this dark water coming out of my mum's hair. And my first haircut, I was about 14 years old. And I made my sister sit down and I did my first haircut with kitchen scissors. No. Younger sister? I still have a sister. <laughs> we're still we're still talking many years later, but I was like, sit down, I want to do this, I want to try it. But my parents obviously did not want me to be a hairdresser. What? They they sent me to secretarial school. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. Did I <laughs> that's you're so far, you're so I opposite know. of that. She kind of exactly. So yeah. I went to this secretarial school and my first job when I left school was in an office. And, uh, but on Saturdays I worked in a, the local salon up the road because that's how much I like doing hair. Wow. So then I got fired from my job because we only had two incoming lines and guess who occupied those two incoming lines all the time? <laughs> With my friends. <laughs> Making appointments for Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> so I got fired from that job and then I slowly etched my way into the industry. Wow, that's incredible, man. Yeah. But, but but when you finally got in, how did, how did your parents feel? Did they finally accept it? He was like, oh, you're not going to make any money. You're going to be on your feet all day, you know. And I mean, look at me. I've gone. I've come so far in the industry. And, um, you know, and he, so he was really proud. Like he's, um, he passed away a few years ago, but he was really proud of all my accomplishments. So I'm glad he got to witness some of that. But my first job was back in the 70s, was in a sweaty Betty type little salon. It was called Petite Salon because it was tiny. And you knew what day and time it was by who was sitting under the hood, pink hood dryer. We had a whole bank of pink hood dryers. So you knew if Mr. Smith was in, oh, it's, Wednesday, 10 a.m., because Mrs. Smith is here. And Mary, the owner, to this day, she could tease hair that it would be 10 feet off the head and then manage to smooth it out and put it into the amazing shape, like a cottage loaf, a plea, whatever. I mean, it was impressive. And I was just sharing this story yet yesterday to my um, students here that take in the reset class that back then they didn't shape hair they cut like she would when she was doing a perm or a roller set because that's what they did if she knew if it, if it was too long she would just whack it off and, and roll it that's what they did there was not like a there wasn't like a, a method or structure oh this looks too long she would cut it off and then roll it in the perm or roll it with a roller set whoa that's so crazy i've got some i've got some interesting memories and i can remember sitting on those dryer banks looking at the hairdresser's journal which you may or may not be familiar with it is the uk's number one trade magazine it's a weekly magazine and i would look through that and look at all these images and i'm going wow how do you do that you know and now fast forward i'm doing that so incredible. Yeah. Who, are your, who are your who are your hair who are your hair heroes? Uh, definitely. Like, really, by the way, that's a really hard sentence. I want a little bit of credit for saying that sentence because that was a really hard <laughs> sentence to get out. Yeah. <laughs> Who are your hair heroes? Well, I love Sharon Blaine. And as you know, she's she's retiring this year. I don't know if you know that. Um, Trevor Sorby, of course, the Vidal Sassoon background. Um, Vivian McKinder. I really love her work too. And actually, I'm going to say me as well, because I have worked hard at becoming who I am. And, yeah. you know, it doesn't happen overnight. It's a lot of blood, sweat and tears, a lot of mistakes, you know, a lot of letdowns. And, and then, you know, and it's so great. I mean, I'm at a place now that I feel full and I feel so happy inside. I just absolutely love the industry still. I'm so passionate about it. So, you know, here we are on my day off, but mm -hmm. it's not a day off because I'm actually teaching a two-day reset, which was Sunday yesterday, and day two is today. What? But I don't mind because I love doing it. 
And I think when you're not doing something, it doesn't matter. You don't have a day off. It, does, it doesn't matter if you have a day off. And, you know, you've all heard the, the quote, if you're, if you're passionate and love what you do, then you never work a day in your life. Mm. Or you work harder. I don't know. <laughs> I love to give back in many ways with my teaching. I love to teach. It's a passion of mine. Uh, I just love to impart my knowledge. Have, have you ever had a chance to meet your hair, uh, hair heroes or had a chance to work with them? Oh, that's a great, no. Actually, I mean, I've seen Vivian McKinder on stage. I've not, I'm not, I can't kick her myself right now because I know Sharon Blaine, that all her courses uh, on tour are sold out. Uh, and this is her last year doing it. And I'm kind of kicking myself that I didn't sign up for the one in New York. Um, but I definitely will invest in her book. She just launched a book, which looks amazing. Um, so no, I haven't met them, but I, I totally, you know, I, I idolize them from afar. I stalk them, you know, I, I always want to see what they're up to and they definitely inspire me. That's us. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely us. Hey, on that note, I, I want to give a real, uh, I want to give a shout out to, uh, to Anthony Whitaker. Um, Anthony Whitaker is the host of the Grow My Salon podcast, and he just had Trevor Sorby on. And for those for those that don't know, Trevor Sorby is at the end of his life, and 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 him and Anthony uh, talked about it um, quite a bit, and it was it was a pretty emotional um, um, episode. So you know, if you're listening in and, and you're interested in, in in what Trevor's up to these days, I, I highly highly recommend um, listening to that podcast. It, it was it was a really really good one. Um, we had Trevor on a couple of years ago, and then um, Anthony has has uh had trevor on or has had trevor on you know a couple weeks ago weeks ago and uh it, it's a really good emotional podcast so shout out to anthony whitaker for um for for that because uh it, it was a great episode oh i'd love to listen to that absolutely it's it, it, it's it's a really really good one and trevor was like the last 10 minutes of the podcast like i'm not gonna lie i was a little emotional you know of him talking about his purpose and 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 and, and, and what his entire career has meant to him you know it was like it, it was it was it was pretty it was pretty remarkable awesome. and not not to bring down the conversation there but, <laughs> uh, but i just there was no way i could not i could not say it because it's, oh. it's just so, it's just it's just so good yeah we yeah like uh we had trevor on a couple years ago and for us like we're like a half a generation past the vidal sassoon thing you know so like our idol was trevor you know so um when we were able to bring him on um we had vivian on and then vivian actually introduced us to trevor is that how it went down yeah or was it chris I can't well, remember it or both well, of Chris them. is the one that set it all up, but then we had uh Vivian Vivian on and then we had Trevor on and we had Vivian listen to the podcast. She was a part of the podcast, but quiet until the very end when we reunited them. And he hasn't yeah, it was it, it was I have watched that. Send me the link to that. Yeah, yeah, I'll definitely send you the link to that to that podcast. It was very it was very, very cool. I, Trevor for me was I think you know, I came into the industry in the 70s, mid-70s, and if you weren't cut in a clean line, it was considered a bad haircut, period. So the discipline to create those, as you can see, those timeless classic shapes, I didn't invent them, but I've mastered them over the years. And we all know the legendary Vidal Sassoon and his team, which Trevor Sorby was a part of, uh, created those timeless classic shapes that really have set us up for our foundations. And, but... When, when I became aware of Travis Wolf, I just, he was more out of the box as well. And I related to him more, but I, for me, the way that I, I title myself is I am a rebellion disciplinarian, mm. hairstylist and educator. The reason why I say that is because if anybody wants to break the rules, it's me, <laughs> you know, I love thinking out of the box. I love to come up with creative stuff and, look at fibers and what can I do with that? I don't know if you ever saw my mop collection, which won me, uh, not when it got me a nomination for Naha a couple of years ago. I mean, that's the kind of stuff I, I just look at something, what can I do with that? You know, before I throw anything out, I, I always assess, what can I do with this? How can I make this work? How can I, what can I create out of this? Because creating is bringing an idea to life bringing an object to life and that I love giving birth to, to collections that to me is one, not what it's like if, if you know what I mean that's where the passion is it's like it's an idea here then it comes to fruition and so but what I love about being uh, fundamentally classically trained is it keeps me grounded mm -hmm. as a hair cutter as a hairstylist behind the chair because I also work behind the chair as well 
and it keeps me grounded. And that's why I love to teach it because it keeps me grounded as a hairdresser. Because, you know, when you teach, you learn. Sure, yeah. You're in a student mode as well. And so, yeah, I'm all about, uh, you know, thinking further out. And creativity is like a muscle. If we don't go to the gym and we don't pump our muscles, what happens? It gets all weak and a little bit jiggly, right? I'm, I'm glad I'm wearing a, a belt. <laughs> <laughs> you can see my jiggle. <laughs> She's hiding the jiggles. <laughs> so to me, it's like when people say, well, how do you do creativity? It's a muscle. You have to pump it. You have to work it. The more you think of ideas and you nurture the ideas, I guarantee they'll come. They'll come a little bit more easier, a little bit more often. But you, you I think you, you can inspire someone, but you can't teach them to be creative. You can inspire them. And, and, it's, like, and it's always great. You you should understand the laws before you break break them. You know those rules. Yes. So make may I just there's my favorite quote: "Learn the rules like a pro, so you can break them like an artist." Pablo Picasso. Oh I yeah. Do that all the time, and when I use that, whether it's on a, from the stage or classroom, there are always light bulb moments that go off. Mm, I do, love. Do, do, how many Nahas have you uh, entered? Oh, entered. Oh God. I'm not going to say hundreds, so there's not many hundreds. I vented almost every year. I won in my first Naha. I won in 2004 for editorial. I was nominated twice the following year in two different categories. And then I got nothing. And I entered every year. And I got nothing for years. And then, not last year, but the two years prior in a row, I nominated for um, Avant Garde. So I love doing photo shoots my passion and so I always think well, if I'm going to do a photo shoot I will always do at least three looks mm. sometimes I do a photo shoot with Naha in mind but so more often than not I do a photo shoot because I want to do it and then when I look at the finished product but, all right which category would this fit best for Naha so mm. you know when you do a photo shoot it takes a lot of planning to do a photo shoot you may as well get three looks and create a collection rather than just do one model. Yeah. When you go, when you scroll through your, oh, I mean, just your work, I mean, you can't help but be blown away. I mean, it is so beautiful. It's, it's so, I mean, creatively, technically, and you can, you can feel it all. It, it, it's stunning. Thank you. It truly is inspiring. I, love, I just love it. I love to cut hair, color hair, put it up, put it down, put it in, put it out. I love it all. I just, I don't like to say the word, no, I can't, mm. but I'll choose to do it or not. Yeah. But I don't want to say I can't do that because I think that word should be, uh, you know, limit, eliminated from our vocabulary anyway. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, more, I'm definitely the glass is half full kind of girl. <laughs> and when I teach, I bring up so much energy and positiveness to my students and bring them up, you know, and because I believe that what's available to me is available to you is available to our audience yeah i mean that word that word can if, if somebody's done it it can it can be done right exactly. it's, just, it's just you know figuring out you know how to do it so um you know if if it's been done it can be done, can yeah. Be done. so yeah so photo shoots is really my jam that's like my so, do, so so with the photo shoots do you use the same photographer or do you pick up photographers no, different photographers and you know because because i've been in philly a long time now i've got a reputation in the art scene like oh, we've heard about your reputation there yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> people want to work with me <laughs> in more ways than one <laughs> but you know i'm out there i network i go to art galleries openings i you know, Instagram is awesome. It's my portfolio. I don't carry business cards. I scout models myself. I prefer to find my own models than to go through an agency. And I'm, I've am i been blessed because I've, I've, I've attracted awesomeness, like awesome people that want to work on the same. They think of the same. You have to have everyone to be on the same page passionately. If they're not, don't do the shoot. You'll ruin the shoot. So, um I work with different people. It's whoever's available or whoever fits that mold. Um, but it, it's that's all part of the photo. A photo shoot is like a production. It's like a movie. You've got to find the cast, and you've got to come up with the concept. 
you know, there's a lot that goes into a photo shoot. So when you do a photo shoot, um, when Francesca does a photo shoot, are you the director or like, are you, are you collaborating with, with the, uh, with the photographer going like, you know, can, you you know, is it a collaboration as far as like what the end result is, or is it, do you have something in mind? Absolutely. It's, um, what I do is uh, when we do a photo shoot, we book it out two or three months in advance. We all collectively, that means makeup, hair, wardrobe, photographer, stylish if you're using a stylist we make we make sure that everyone's got it on their calendar the date is set and you have nothing else going on you can't leave at five o'clock because i've got to go and pick up johnny no you've got to be available all day and then i work backwards so then that gives you time to work on the concept to create a storyboard a storyboard on lighting on the mood on you know coloring on makeup everything so everybody's on the same page and then it actually it just flows really well then because everybody's been part of it and it's their collaboration. It's our collaboration. It's not my shoe. It's our photo shoe. And the models, I get them involved. It's, 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 it's like we become one big family before the actual shoot day. And the excitement, everybody's so excited, you know, because like I, I work with the models ahead. I coach them on how to pose and how to breathe and you know kind of looks and we have our poses set like do i want you to be front or semi front or side because especially if you're doing a, coll- a collection for naha you know typically most of the um categories are, are three looks there's only a couple that are five images so you've got to look at well how are those three going to look how are you going to present them so i always look at the pose one of the th- first thing i do what angle do I want these these three and how do I want it to look as a trio so then I build my hair around that because if you don't want to be messing around on the left side if she if the right side is going to be her look so there's a lot that goes into the whole thought process of it and uh, no by the time shoot day comes everybody's super psyched on board it's awesome and we have a good we have an amazing time on on set we cry when we get the, you just know when you get the shot. Like when, when you look at the mop collection and the girl um, went wow, like this, we didn't ask her to do that. She looked at herself in the mirror. She, I don't know who she channeled, but also she turned around and she went, Wah. and we went, oh my God, that's it. Do that again. It was, and every, now I have it blown up at home on my wall. Every time I see it, I get the chills when I see it. And we, we all, all of us on set felt that. And we said, that's it. That's the shot. If you just feel it, it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. And because I love doing photos, I don't know if you know this, but I'm all, I've am i organized a program I'm doing in Italy. In Italian? Well, it can be. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, luckily I speak Italian. But so we could have a little Italian lesson. Um, may I expand on it a little bit right at this point? Absolutely. Absolutely. Your hour. It's called A Hairstylist Creative Escape. Eat, play, learn. It's a five-day program. It's September 10th through the 16th. So it's a mon- Monday through Friday. I'm going to work backwards. You know I love doing photo shoots. I also love Italy. I love Vino. And I love Italy, just period. There's no, well, there's not nothing to look about Italy, right? So I'm like, well, why don't we put it all together? So on Friday, the last day, we're doing a photo shoot, which will be all day. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday morning for three hours, we're doing hair art creations. We're making hair pieces for the theme that we're putting together. And then we're doing we're going to do a cooking class. We're going wine tasting. We have an art, a tour guide taking us on a tour guide. It's going to be in Florence, Firenze in Italy. We're doing a tour guide, art tour. Uh, and all this is happening that week is going to be absolutely incredible. We had our first Zoom meeting two weeks ago. We have our second Zoom meeting this Thursday. So now that we've got people coming in to do the course, uh, we're meeting regularly so that we can start building the momentum and also start building the idea of what the theme will be. And the reason why I'm doing it that way, because I'm bringing all the props, you know, the hair hair pieces, the wigs or the hair extensions, whatever. So I need to really narrow it down and know exactly what I'm bringing with with me to this awesome program it's going to be amazing i'm when sorry is, when is this happening this year september 10th through the 16th eight weeks of so people there's still room for two more if anybody wants to join us 
and they can DM me on Instagram uh, Francesca Rovetti underscore Hera or my website FrancescaRovetti.com and it's just going to be brilliant absolutely brilliant what an incredible opportunity. I know. You know what I, I got? I was getting excited as she was talking because I think we've kind of like changed what like what like a hair class or a hair show is because I love that it's it's so well rounded. I love that 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 it's the sense of community, not just come in and learn like how to do X. You know, it's a sense of community. And, and as an industry um, and, and certainly Tony and I have um, have tried to keep the focus on, um, you know, the community of hairstylists. You know, and, and I just I love that that this is kind of we did hair love a couple of times and, and hair love is very much about about the hair community. And um, I just I, I'm very excited for where we are. Al Vanessa Rose was telling me about hair love. Yeah, hair, that's another. One. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Vanessa Rose, of course. Um, you guys were on a kayaking trip. We did. And we almost drowned because it, it, it was like this monsoon that happened in the middle of kayaking in the lake. I mean. It pulled, it was bouncing off, the rain was bouncing off the river and attacking us like needles. It was crazy, but so exciting at the same time. <laughs> that happened to me on a boat one time in, in the middle of Deep Creek. Out of nowhere, it started like just thundering lightning and oh, a little bit of sleet. And you're in the middle of this lake trying to make it back to the dock. And it's like, it's- We were paddling like crazy, trying to get under trees, trying to get under- and the water was so choppy, I was hanging onto it. I was hanging onto the tree. So, did you have um, life vest? <laughs> yes, thank God I did. I had the life vest on, yeah. yeah. Uh, but you know what? Let me tell you something. We were never ever so present. Mm. That was, we were so present because we had to be, you know, but it was hilarious. We laughed so hard about the whole thing afterwards, you know. But That's yeah, amazing. it was a nice adventure. <laughs> Oh my God, that, that's amazing. So always be a part of your story now. That's, that's <laughs> right. So we bonded on another level. <laughs> yeah. you, and listen, you, you always, when things get tough, that's where the bonds come in, man. You know, exactly. Right. exactly. You know, like, like that's why, that's why uh, 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 the football players are athletes and, and, and military are together, you know, Francesca, where, where were you with Graham Webb? How do we miss you? How do, how do, how do we miss each other? I don't know. How so, well, you know, I came over with the product division, so I wasn't based at the academy. I was I was on the road all the time, and I was part of their creative team. You know, Irene, remember Irene Meikle? Sure, yeah, yeah. Well, she was a creative director, and she and I, and with, with uh, other members of the creative team, would create haircut collections for the product division. And then it was only taught at the academy once in a while and mainly that that was when we did the boot camp training for our regional and district educators that worked for the product division so it really wasn't at the, the academy that often so maybe that's why and i'm because jared was already living here so i met g from the brain web circle yeah we we met g in london actually oh we, for the first time yeah for the first time we were in london and then he um and then he came to the U.S. like within a month or something. It was like, oh, yeah, look, our dude's here, you know, yeah, that kind of thing. Graham Webb offered, you know, an opportunity to go to London, to the school in London uh, for a few weeks uh, and learn, uh, gets, you know, there. And he gave us a great tour of the House of Parliament and all these special tours throughout England. That's amazing. Yeah. He is an amazing human being. You should try and get him on your show, actually. Who, Mr. Graham Webb? We had. We have. We've had Graham Webb. Come on, Francesca. This is oh. our first rodeo. All right. Well, maybe bring him back. I don't know. What, do you know how you remember Ice Cap? Yes, I loved Ice Cap. Do you do you know how he came uh, uh to create create that product? Uh no. Tell right, me. You have, to, you have to go listen to the podcast. Yeah, Sorry. Right. Listen to it. But I do remember if you use it in the shower, oh, it burns. <laughs> Yeah, but he all yeah. your parts. <laughs> but he was in the hospital when he was in the hospital, and they used to put that cold press on his head, and that and he was like, it was so invigorating. He was th he thought like, how can I create that in a hair product? And that's how he came up with Ice Cap. It was a top selling product, Ice Cap. Oh, I loved it. I, I loved remember it. we had those little round brushes, uh, natural brushes, and did a little little head scalp uh, scalp uh, treatments. Uh, yeah. Sometimes it was too much for the client, right? Because it really too much for me. 
<laughs> it was a tingly product. Anyway, so um, Joy just walked in, by the way, just to let you know. Hi, Joy. Uh, hi, Joy. <laughs> um, so that's a... Uh, I mean, back to that, uh, back to the Graham episode that we did, um, we're promoting podcasts here, but um, we had a, we had a really emotional kind of like ending to that as well. Um, he just, uh, he talked about when, um, when, Lord, what, what, who was a Procter and Gamble uh, yeah. moonlighted, moonlighted his product, you know, and he was like, he got pretty emotional about that, but also an interesting story about him um, is that apparently Amy Winehouse used to sing in his house and, um, his kids are all highly musically talented. They are amazing. The daughters, uh, the Webb sisters, they, they've done backing vocals for Leonard Cohen. They traveled with Tom Petty. And, you know, Graham is amazing because um, every time his kids would be traveling through Philly, he would always ring me or email me. I've got two tickets for you go and see them, which was, you know, amazing that he would still think of you like so many years later. Yeah. He's a, such an incredible human being. He really is. Well, Graham, if you listen to this episode, if they ever come to DC, you know, we would take, we'll take two tickets for whatever. <laughs> well, he invited us to come hang out in London. Uh, and same with Trevor uh, when yeah. we had him on the podcast, but unfortunately with the see, pandemic. Look, guys, you've got all these invitations to go to London. Oh, uh, we got to get over there. We should go to the alternative hair show and, report live from there it's it's coming up in october oh we can't do october unfortunately uh, uh well, well maybe we should plan that before we just we need to figure out we need to figure out how we can get in and how we can uh how we can broadcast from there i would love to broadcast from there that would be fantastic is it still at the royal albert hall um last year it wasn't now i don't know if they're going back to it this year but i forget i think it's called the troxy it was a really cool venue, but it was not the Royal Albert Hall. Right. Yeah. Well, nothing is. I, uh, I can remember going there years ago to see, you know, after Salon International, going to see the alternative. And I'm like blown away by the artistry, right? It's just like unbelievable the work that these teams produce. And I remember sitting there going, oh my God, how do you, how do you get to be part of this? And then boom, two years in a row, I'm, I become a finalist. That's for cool. the alternative. <laughs> That's really incredible. Cool. That is yeah. really cool. We uh we we did like I said we did the one in Chicago and 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 it was kind of cool to be we were yo I, we were young young hairdressers at the time and it was very cool to kind of be there with all your heroes and not just there but like actually watching them work you know behind stage and, like, and like being and being on like parallel with them because we were working you know backstage as well. Um, yeah, backstage is the best. If you anybody ever gets the opportunity to assist backstage, take that offer. Because you will learn so much backstage, yeah. so much. Yeah, for sure. And I also recommend you getting there early because if you're going to fan out, you know, fan out early so you don't miss. So you're not fanning out when you have the opportunity to learn. Are you part of a team like the alternative show? It's kind of like your hair, your hair photo shoot, right? I mean, you got to plan uh, uh, kind of a, a, a presentation, and it's uh, how, how do you how do you prepare for something like that? Well, last year was crazy because I was actually in Italy on holiday because I love Italy when I got the announcement that I'm a finalist and then you have to submit a photo and there's only three categories and there are guess what no rules awesome no absolutely no rules for either categories either avant-garde cut and color or men's and that's it so I got the notification when I was in Italy and I was coming back like the next week and we I had two weeks so then you have to do a video then they come up with a theme so last year was some kind of iconic thing. And you had to do a one up to a one minute video based on that theme and then submit that. And then that got so, and what I did this amazing uh, look, uh, my inspiration was Audrey Hepburn. So it's actually somewhere on my Instagram. Uh, it's definitely on my YouTube channel. And, um, but we you know we, Pulled it together. The first thing I did was I called the, my photographer who does video, video uh, videography as well. Told him about, I'm calling him from Italy, by the way. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm in Italia. Now I'm like planning a photo shoot, a video shoot. So yes, we've got the date on the calendar. Then I got to call the model, make sure she's available. And then that was it. And I came back and then I had to go hot and heavy right into it and make the pieces and create the look and then produce. But it's amazing what you can do with such short notice when you 
have resources. Yeah, I think David Bowie uh, sang a song about that called Under Pressure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Under pressure. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so you know, here for the last forty minutes, we've seen this big sign behind you that says the reset. What, what, what what's reset? And in, in, in chat, us, and you also mentioned it that you're doing a class of reset. What's the reset? So, reset is a program I put together last year, and it's a program to bring us back to our classical global fundamentals. So, it's revisiting our skill set. I know that most schools in the U.S. do not teach much cutting, if at all, they probably just skim over the surface. So, and it really saddens me that individuals pay thousands and thousands of dollars to go to school just to get a piece of paper, and then they can't even hold their scissors at the end of it. So it's a program I've been thinking about for the longest time, and then it came together last year. And I just think it's such a, it speaks volumes, the name it's reset, it's just, we have to stop and we reset. So it's for anyone in the industry, any haircutter in the industry, regardless of level of experience. But especially if you're recently graduating, this is something that I highly recommend people invest in, but it's for anyone. I've got such an eclectic uh, group of lovely ladies with me this weekend with different backgrounds and different levels of experience, but we're all on the same page when we're doing the reset. So it's it's a way to like come back and rethink revisit and refresh our skill set because I, I do feel that hair cutting is becoming a lost art yeah and, and how often do you offer this um this has been my first year so um I, i'm going to be offering it every month in my studio you can bring me to your studio uh, and i've also put together a two-hour video which is going to go on my website soon so if they can't make it there's a plethora of information and techniques and I'm on there doing the haircuts as well so they can invest in that video also uh and but the best way to do it is hands-on workshop you know you of course. know how many, how many days is it it's two days it's boot camp style so when I say boot camp style we don't stop we don't stop for lunch we, we just have a little nibble and I do a demo and the morning we go we revisit the head shape I spend at least an hour talking about the reference points of the head shape. Where does hair lay and live when you release it? Because every section lives somewhere. And the disciplines of hair chi, what I call hair chi, and that is the practice of positive posture. And what, what, why do we do that? Because you have to be eye line to action line when you're cutting hair. If you're doing a bob and your line is here and you're looking there, you're not gonna get a clean, precise line. So there's a lot of, it's all about the disciplines. It's revisiting the disciplines and the girls are loving it. That I, I promise you, if you do your hair chi, you'll thank me for it because you'll get a stronger back, you get stronger legs. You know, you take, you keep that core engaged, you keep that A-frame, you lunge left and right and you really move into the flow of your haircut. So we talk about scissor ergonomics, how to hold your scissors, how to flip the scissors. I mean, it's a whole uh process that we go through before we do the class and when they sign up for the class and they've paid in full what I do or what I've done which seems to be really working is I put a video together called call to action and it's a call to action on hair chi on scissor ergonomics and I forget what else something else it's for them to prep before class so they become familiar because a lot of that is uncomfortable for some people when they haven't flipped their scissors or haven't used their body it more effectively so it's a way for them to prep before class and you know practice makes progress if you don't prep and practice then that's on you right so reset is the class for anyone but i can guarantee anyone that takes it a couple of things it will do it will definitely boost your confidence after mm. the class yeah, sure. maybe uh after vivian's uh podcast i went up to her uh residence and we did a razor class with her maybe we'll go up and uh we'll, we'll do the reset I was, class with you. I was literally just thinking like like I haven't I haven't cut hair since 95 and I wonder like it would I be would, the last thing I'd want to do would be to slow the class down. You know what I mean? Uh, oh no. But you know the reason what reset it's not solely about the line. So there's reset one, two and three. Reset one is line work. The one length shapes, your classic shapes, your what you're seeing behind the A line, the square and the halo page boy 
goal. And then we progress into graduation and the second class and layering and face framing. And then we break the rules in the third class. So we learn the rules like a pro so we can break them like an artist. So if you did the entire reset program, it's three classes. So it's not just the, it's not just the first class. I mean, the one class. We focus on reset one and then we progress. And next year I'll be introducing reset two as well as reset three. So ideally you would have to take reset one and progress that way. And it's an, it's a gift that you're giving yourself. It's an investment that you're giving yourself. And it's, Obviously, then day it's up to you as an individual to maintain that skill set behind your chair. We can all get, we all lose our way at times. So that's what reset will do. It will bring you back to a comfortable place and definitely boost your confidence. But reset isn't solely about the shapes you're seeing behind me. It's about you. These disciplines should apply to every every haircut you do. Right. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree with all of that. Yeah. So I'm really passionate about it. And that's my baby right now, as well as photo shoots. So I've got another baby. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I mean, tell, tell our people how they can find you. How can they follow you? How can they learn more about the reset? Sure. Well, on Instagram, it's Francesca Rivetti underscore hair art. Or you can go to my website, FrancescaRivetti.com. There's information there about reset as well as the Italy. Everything's on there. We're going to be adding more programs this year. I've hire somebody to help me with all the admin side and the behind the scenes, you know, the computer stuff. Because <laughs> I'm getting to the point now, it's too much for me to do everything. And I do all my own videos and my own video editing as well. So there's that part. So everything that you see me post, I I create, but it's taking, it takes a lot of work to keep up to date with all your social media. But it's a gift that you give yourself and everyone that's taken it has just said it's made such a difference in their life. You know, after the the after effects of it and uh, that's why i like reset so the way i'm teaching like before you pick up your scissors reset think reset what am i doing oh yeah i've got an a frame i've got to be eye line to action line why is your why is your one that's bob look graduated because you're not eye line to action line you know i, I love that word because i would have never thought that right like yeah. eye line to action line but it makes sense like if you're looking down at an angle just for you to be able to see it you're going to add graduation yeah, you know, and it's a lot because that people aren't used to using their body. So, like yesterday, I said, "Are you uncomfortable?" They all said, "Yes." They're good. You're meant to be uncomfortable, mm -hmm. and it will feel uncomfortable until you, it becomes comfortable. And mastering your skills is not learning a skill. Mastering is continuous, repetitively executing it until you get it down to the point where you could do it with your eyes closed. That mm -hmm. to me is what mastering is. So. This this course is for anyone that's really serious about changing their game. Yeah, what what the, there, there's a great quote that uh it's been all over uh, Instagram recently was like uh mastering isn't isn't learning a new school skill or making a mistake. It's not not making a mistake. It's it's doing it often enough so you can't make a mistake or, or... Exactly. yes, exactly. That's what that's how I look at uh, mastering your skills. And I'll say like with the haircuts behind me, I didn't invent them, but I've mastered. The haircuts. I love it. And now uh, you're it with yeah. So before I do that, that like say, well, any one of those shapes, I reset. Well, you know what's amazing about those looks behind you, and and for those people that are just listening in, she's got these um, you know, these these really like strong like bob shapes. But I don't care what the trend is. If you get a really beautiful like bob shape, like it's just it's just yeah. amazing. It's timeless. It's timeless, right? And you can see the mannequin on the stand behind us. Uh, these are what the girls created yesterday. So today we're move, we're progressing onto the square bob and then progressing onto the halo. I love it. And the one on your left shoulder is those are the ones that you've done. Uh, my left shoulder. No, the ones right at the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah those are those are the wigs that I did on Amelia, the model for the reset. Yeah. yeah, and then the, on the mannequins here, these are what um, Anna, Joy, and Victoria did yesterday. Gotcha. So brilliant, awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, Francesca, dude. Well, first, G, thank you, thank you for the introduction. Yeah, thank you, G. <laughs> that was a quick hour. Yeah, you ain't kidding. Oh my god, we had fun. Yeah, we did have fun. We absolutely yeah. had. Especially, fun. you're so busy, and we were we're so appreciative that you gave us you know, an hour of your time and, and in it, the middle of a class, yeah. in the middle of a class day, you know, like it, yeah, hopefully we'll be on that side soon. 
Oh, well, yeah. you know where to find me. And I would love to have you. So thank you very much for having me on your awesome podcast, guys. Francesca, thank you so much. Thanks for hanging out with us. And thank you very, very much for joining us on your day off. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, share it with friends, give us a rating and drop a review. To listen to all the latest podcasts, please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet. And to stay connected on and off the show, you can follow us at Hair Street on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Peace and love.